Well, police in New York City reportedly baffled by difficult new requirements that make them hesitant to stop and search suspected criminals. According to the New York Post, cops compare the paperwork required after every stop to applying for a mortgage, and not in a good way. Some cops say they're afraid to stop anybody because they figure police brass won't support them in a controversy. Ted Williams is an attorney and a former D.C. homicide detective, also worked for the feds. Heather McDonald is the author of the book, The War on Cops, How the New Attack on Law and Order Makes Everyone Less Safe, and they both join us tonight. Heather, first to you. Crime is going up in certain parts of the country. That seems obvious, not just the murder rate, but uh, the armed robbery rate, for example. Is this part of the reason? Absolutely, Tucker. Cops across the country are deciding it's better to just drive on by that guy hanging out on a known drug corner at 2 a.m., hitching up his waistband as if he has a gun, because for the last three years, they've been living with this specious Black Lives Matter narrative that says that that type of essential constitutional proactive policing is racist. They're worried about getting caught on a cell phone video having to use lawful force to uh, subdue a resisting suspect and they don't have to make those stops those are purely discretionary and we've had a twenty percent increase in our murder rate in the last two years victims overwhelmingly black an additional eighteen hundred black males have been killed in the last two years compared to twenty fourteen right. so this this depolicing is a very serious problem well, it hurts the people who live in those neighborhoods who are not, who are not rich policymakers. Um, so, Ms. Williams, you've, you've been on the retail end of this. You've been a cop. If you felt like you were under this kind of scrutiny and that you might be sued for stopping someone, would you be less likely to stop people? I would be clearly less likely to stop someone. And let me say, this kind of political correctness I believe is going to get some law enforcement officer killed. Just yesterday, in Baltimore, Maryland, a father of five, Sean Souters, stopped a guy and was shot in the head, and he's now dead. Police officers have to make split-second decisions, and you cannot micromanage police officers. And I'm just really upset with the, the manner in which New York is trying to micromanage their police officers, and they don't have the backs of the body. Their supervisors don't have and their backs, and that is very troubling. And it's obvious, and, and it's not just in New York. It's in a lot of other cities, including Chicago. Heather, there's got to be a way to work against or try and stop the abuse of power by anybody in authority, because it's always wrong, but at the same time allow police to keep tr crime under control. Why has nobody, why do we have to overcorrect so dramatically? Well, first of all, obviously officers have to be accountable and we need transparency. So right. some sort of oversight is absolutely essential, but we have had that oversight. There is no evidence that we have had a problem with systemically racist policing. I think the Trump administration is doing a good job in trying to turn the narrative around. Attorney General Jeff Sessions has sent a strong message to federal law enforcement that he wants them to put a priority on prosecuting violent crime, putting people away in prison, which is not something that was going on under Attorney General Eric Holder. At a local matter, police chiefs have to let, pol let their cops know that they are going to tell the, poli the public what the crime data is and, and that police going to where people are most being victimized, which is tragically in black neighborhoods, is not going to get the cops in trouble. Right. So, Ted, I mean, when I was a kid, cities were depopulating because of crime. Do you think people have forgotten what that was like? Yeah, I think we are at, in a different time uh, right now. And you, you're finding that, especially in predominantly black neighborhoods, Good people are fearful just to come out into the neighborhood because they don't know the difference between whether good police officers are going to be there to help them out or whether the crook is their best friend. And, 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 and what I am saddened about right now is to try to tie police officers' hands. There's a case constitutionally, Terry versus Ohio, that dealt with stop and frisk. And the, the Supreme Court has given police officers the right to stop someone if they're in fear of their own safety, they can do a pat down and they can even go in. And now we seem to try to erode even Terry versus Ohio, and you're putting police officers' lives in danger. So, uh, Heather McDonald, really quickly, where, where can you get re crime statistics that you can believe? It feels like they're politicized and there's a lot of lying about them. How can you find out what the crime rate is in your city? 
Well, New York actually does a pretty good job of publishing crime data. And what we know is that a black New Yorker is 50 times more likely to commit a shooting than a white New Yorker. That fact means that we are going to have more stops in black neighborhoods. That's not because the police are racist. It's because they're trying to save the lives of those thousands of people uh, that are, are living there. As, as Mr. Williams rightly says, the majority are law-abiding. They want the police. They want protection. Uh, and the public should know what these massive crime disparities are, which is what is responsible for policing uh, in different neighborhoods. Yeah, so normal people can be protected. Ted Heather, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.